Hi. <laughs> We're gonna interview Victor Pope Jr. today. Yep. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna send a couple people to live. I'm gonna send yeah. them for my live too. I mean, for my Instagram. Okay, cool. I wanna try to get a bunch of people in here. For real, same. Okay. My name is Carrie. <laughs> I'm so very. Alright. I'm nervous now. Where's my. Why'd okay. you wave to me? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, What's up, Brian? Dennis Rodman. If Dennis Rodman joined this alive, that would be crazy. Okay. Yo, what's up, KJ? We're trying to wait for our guest to join. Our special guest. Look at what um, look what Q made. Backwards, bro. Wait. Oh no, it's not. My bad. Would you, would you guys um, wear these if it was um, <laughs> um, on? What's it called? A hoodie or sweatpants? Like this. Okay. Is Wait. It? Like on sweatpants like this. Yeah. What's up? Yo. What's good, man? How are you? <laughs> man, nigga, chilling. How y'all doing? Doing good. good. Uh, how how was your day? It was alright, you know. Went grocery shopping, went taco shopping, walked my dog, shit like that. What'd you get? Uh, <laughs> bananas, um, apples, um, whole bunch of shit, whole bunch of stuff. My son like. That's cool. <laughs> um. Okay. So for this interview, I want you to tell our followers who you are and what you do, because I'm not sure if everybody knows who you are. Uh, former comedian, former battle rapper, former whole bunch of stuff. Uh, now I make music though. So, um, so what made you want to switch to music? Um, I don't know. I felt like I just didn't have the same passion that I had uh, for that I used to have for comedy. I kind of lost that passion. But I always had passion. My passion for music never went away the entire time that I stopped doing music to pursue comedy. So, because you were like, doing music before comedy, right? Yeah, yeah, I was doing music. I was battle rapping and I was also doing songs with my friends, but I never released nothing. I was just doing music just to do it, just to express myself. How long were you battle rapping for? Uh, probably like a, a year, roughly. <laughs> what made you stop battle rapping? I was uh, getting in a lot of fights, and <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't. It wasn't that. It was just too serious. I was taking. I was taking it too serious. It's supposed to be like an art form, and I was just being too serious about it. Right. Um. What was I gonna say? Oh, were you still doing music while you were doing comedy and Vine and all that stuff? Uh, no, nah, not really, not at all. I really was like on some shit. Like, okay, I need to focus one hundred percent on comedy and you know mm -hmm. the whole a man who chases two rabbits catches none shit so i was just like comedy 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 and that's that's the thing i think that's what made me hate comedy even more because i kind of put like my number one passion to the side if i was still like doing both i probably wouldn't had lost the passion for comedy but when did you move out to la uh the end of 2015 i think <laughs> Yeah, 2015, and then I left in 2019, so I was out there for three or four years. Did you go out there to pursue comedy, or did you also want to work on music out there? Uh, Well, yeah, at that time, I just wanted to do I only had comedy on my mind, so yeah, I was just trying to do comedy. How did that go? Did it work out the way you thought it would? Yeah, I had a lot of um, a lot of good opportunities. Um, I had a, a a, a, a creator's contract with Super Deluxe. That was cool. Um, I did a comedy special with Revolt TV um, that aired. On, uh, I did a lot of comedy shows. It was cool. I was just, I don't know, I, but my heart still wasn't there type shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I was getting all of the success with it, and I just still wasn't happy, you know? So is that why you moved back to Texas to pursue the music? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came, I visited home for my son's birthday in 2019, and I was, everybody was just so much bigger than I last seen him. You know, my son, he would still come to L.A. for, um, you know, summers and holidays, but it still wasn't enough. So I'm like, damn, what am I really missing 
all of this stuff with my family and all of these important moments for like for some shit that I don't I don't even care about as much as I as I used to. Mm -hmm. But it what, was like a it was like a no brainer to move back. So what's the music scene like where you're at right now? Oh, I don't know everything. I, I don't know. I just <laughs> I mean it's not like especially with the pandemic it's not like motherfuckers is doing showcases or shows so. You know, I I record at my house. I record it. I rec everything I do, I record by myself, and I just drop it from there. So, how do you find producers to work with? Um, I know people. I know um, my some some of my friends do music. So the producers they work with, or I just go on YouTube and I just mm -hmm. I'll be looking for beats for like an hour or two. I'm very picky with beats. I'm very very picky with beats. It takes me a long time to find them. Did you ever release music like on YouTube or SoundCloud before, like way before comedy and all the battle rapping stuff? Um, I did a collab with my friend. I did some collabs with my friends, and he I, he released them from his shit. So yeah. Oh, cool. How did that go? It was cool. I mean, you know, it wasn't like my project. It wasn't like nothing that I was taking. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't something that I was at the helm of. So. I didn't have that same in, uh, enjoyment or involvement that really just made me care that much. For sure. Um, there was a song on your EP, I think it was the last song, when you were, it's kind of like you were storytelling about you switching from comedy back to music. Did you want to like tell us about the process of writing that or what the song means? Oh yeah, I wrote that like, um, at that point I had already been back home. And the song was called Back Home and um, yeah, it was just me about me really like being like, why am I in LA? Like, you know, one of the lyrics is, I've been out here, I've been, I've been here three years and I ain't fell in love with no one. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just nothing, nothing, and nobody was really keeping me there. And um, I wrote it when I was, I had already been back home for like six or seven months already in Texas, still when I wrote that song, but I still kind of felt homesick because I, um, I was still like, um, I I was still like an hour away from where I'm like actually from in my, my family. And um, I wrote that song just to still be grateful that I was in Texas at least, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think you'll ever move somewhere else to work on music or are you gonna stay in Texas for your family? Um, I mean, I record in my room, so I can I can collab with other artists in my room to send me the, you know what I'm saying, send me the beat, send me the whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have to leave. Yeah, for sure. Um, so is music going to now be your full-time career? Is that what you're going to focus on for? Yeah, for, I mean, for, the, for the last year and a half, that's what it's been. I've been working on a, I was working on the EP for a year and a half. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. What made you, or when did you start exactly working on it? Like what made you want to focus in on it? Um, I moved when I, when I came home and, um, when I came home and, uh, for my son's birthday, um, I was supposed to chill with this one girl. Um, on one of the nights that I was out here and she flaked on me and I had nothing to do that night. And I, my homie was like, shit, bro, just pull up on me. We can make some music. Like, you know, let's get back in the booth. So I got a, then I, that, that's when I made the song Stones. Um, I think that's the fourth, the, actually the fifth, um, fifth, the second to last track on the, uh, on the EP. And I made that song and I just couldn't stop listening to it. And like, I, I just remember being like so proud that I had made it and I hadn't had that feeling with comedy in so long. Like I haven't, uh, you know what I mean? I wasn't, I didn't have any jokes that I was proud of or I could just keep listening to or that, you know? So I was like, damn, I, I really need to be rapping. Like I'm really good at this shit and I really enjoy doing it. Yeah, for sure. Did you ever um, like sit back and regret your comedy career or your Vine career? Uh, no, I have fun. Um, yeah, I have fun. I just regret it. I just regret um, the shit I didn't do, which was music. I didn't regret anything mm -hmm. I did with comedy. For sure. Has anybody, somebody asked if anybody's reached out to you since the EP dropped? Any big artists or producers? Uh, yeah, low key. Uh, motherfuckers that, I, that I've been wanting to work with. And, Pete, and like, um, one of the beats that I found off of YouTube, he's a, um, he's a big producer. And he reached mm -hmm. out and uh, he was like, yo, man, I saw you use the beat. Like, that shit was dope. And um, he sent me a pack. So that was cool. Um, yeah. What are what are some things that keep you motivated to keep making music? Shit, I don't know. Like, day by day, whenever something happened to me, I write about it immediately, really. Um, and I, just, I just get it off my chest as soon as it happened. What's your writing process like? Um, I freestyle. I freestyle. 
I try to write on my phone, then I I just turn the the um I turn the mic on. Cause I got a home studio, and I just freestyle until I hear a flow I like or I hear a a pocket that I'm in, and I go from there. Mm -hmm. well, and a lot of times I hear a beat, and I'll be like, once I find a beat I like, you know, I'll just be like, what is this? What is this beat? What memory does this bring back to me? Like, what does it make me think about? And then I'll write about that. You think you could freestyle for us later? Later in the vlog? <laughs> uh, 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 no. <laughs> no, I gotta be. I, I usually, I usually like to do it when I'm lit. Um, someone asked, "What's your dream collab? Like, who would you like love to work with if you had the choice of anybody?" Um, damn, you know what? Fiona Apple. I'm a real big Fiona Apple fan. Like, I'm a huge Fiona Apple fan. Um. Other rappers, though, I don't know. I um, I'm too. I'm too. I'm too. I love rap too much to like want to share it with somebody on the phone. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be on the same beat with you, really. I mean, that's why my my tape had no features. Like I didn't. I didn't have any. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know when I hear a beat. I don't. I don't want to put nobody else on it. I want it all to myself. Do you, would you do features for somebody else? Uh yeah, that's what I've been doing now recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, people hit me up and uh, I do. They did send me an open verse on one of their tracks and. You know, and I hear what they rapping about, what the chorus is about. Now, I mean, I have fun doing that, but as far as like my own shit and beats I pick, I never hear shit and just be like, "Damn, I want this person on it," or "I need somebody else on it," or you know, I just uh, I don't know. I never felt like that before. Or do you have like any like dream producers you'd like to work with? Uh, no, I really want to start producing my own shit. Really, um, I have a friend who who um, she's a singer. She says she, since since she's been producing her own shit. She's really been um, been able to um, just really groom her own style more and really evolve as an artist. So I really want to start. I think that's the next step for me, really. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you what some of your goals for this year are for music. Um, I just want to make another take. I just want to keep making music, um, keep shooting videos. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the, you know, keep keep doing these features. To where it's just like 100%, I'm doing music full time and I don't have to um, be on social media as much because I, you know, social media is draining as an artist. I don't like doing it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, what's kind of like your end goal with the whole music career? What's the, like the big thing you want to accomplish? I mean, I, I feel like I'm already, I'm already at that point. I mean, I just want to tell my story. When I got a story, I want to tell it, uh, express myself, and be able to survive off of it. So. You know, yeah, I'm already doing it. So, yeah. do you think when it comes to like doing shows and stuff, it'll be easy for you since you're used to doing like some of the stand up stuff? Yeah, the stand up and the battle rap and all of that stuff. I'm a born performer. You know, I'm really good at per just performance has always been my you know strong suit. Um, so yeah, yeah, it'll be pretty easy. Do you get motivation from like being in front of a crowd and seeing their reaction? Yeah, when I'm rolling, for sure, for sure. Like, when I'm on the road, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a God-like feeling. I mean, you know, when the camera's on or live, either way, like, I get some just turn on, some just click for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, wait, I'm going to see if anyone commented questions. Who is your greatest influence? Um... Rapper wise, um, Lupe Fiasco. I'm a real Lupe Fiasco fan. A real big Lupe Fiasco fan. Drake too. Lupe and Drake. I fuck with them. Yeah. Who did you grow up listening to? Uh, Lupe and Young Jeezy. I was a real big. Who you, who you vote? Who do you want to win the Jeezy versus Gucci Mane battle? Uh, Jeezy. Just because, and Jeezy definitely did win by a lot, so, yeah. Do you think but, any of the people you grew up listening to have influenced your sound? Yeah. Yeah. You know, even people, you know, I used to, when I was I, when I was in church for a little bit, you know, a lot of people that I was around influenced the two. And, and really, even, like, um, I remember in my, my apartments that I that I grew up in, it was one of, one of, one of them, um, they used to just make me freestyle. 
And, you know, I remember one time, the first time they did it, I had spit, like, a written some, I had spit um, somebody else's verse. I had spit uh, Lil Flip, one of Lil Flip's old verses. And it was like, you know what I mean? You can't do that. Then I was like, I was like seven or eight. And I was just thinking, like, damn, like, it was embarrassing because I was like, damn, they caught me. And that made me just always want to freestyle. And that's kind of where, like, my writing, you know, that's the best part. That's a big part of my writing process now. So. For sure. Um, somebody said, what software do you use for your beats? I mean, I record on Pro Tools. I don't make my own beats yet, but I, re I record on Pro Tools. I used to um, record and mix everything on Pro Bass. I mean, not Pro, not Pro Bass, but uh, Cubase. But that was like a long time ago when I when I was like first started rapping, but what wasn't released or nothing. Um, are you like with a label or anything right now, or is it all by yourself? Oh yeah, I'm doing everything solo. Um, I was I was signed to my um, to one of my producer, one of the guy who I was signed to uh, some agency, and uh, but I. I I felt like I didn't have as much creative control as I wanted. And I felt like I was in the same um, predicament that I was in with comedy at one point because um, I was signed to, like, it was, kind of, it was kind of a comedy label. They gave me a, a budget to do three short films. And it was a big budget, but it was also, like, I didn't have the last say. And the guy that I had contact with, you know, the um, – the producer, he didn't even have a last say uh, creatively on, on what should happen. So it was just like, damn, like, with even with the music label, I felt that way, too, because it was like, you know, if it's day money, then it's day decisions, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that at all. I rather, that's why it really, that's really why it took me so long to do this shit, because I had to um, learn, the, I had to learn how to mix myself. I had to learn how to do a lot of shit myself since I didn't want to do it with a label. So it, it took me way longer than, you know, I was, I thought it was only going to take me, you know, six months. It ended up taking me a year and a half because I wanted to do everything by myself. Uh, do you play any instruments or do you plan on, like, teaching yourself how to play an instrument? Or yeah, I wanna, lessons? I, yeah, I want to do piano. I definitely want to do piano. Um, I was, my son got a guitar recently. He's learning how to play that. And hopefully he can teach me that when he's done. So. <laughs> sure. Make a song with him. Oh yeah, he he actually recorded something before and it was really dope, low key. <laughs> you gotta share it with us. <laughs> um, was the transition from comedy to music difficult? Were your friends supportive? Um, I mean, my roommates in LA at the time. I was like, I want to move back home and I just want to do, you know, I want to do um, I want to do music, and it was like, you know. Are you sure, bro? Like, you know, you've been doing comedy for a long time. It was like a house meeting, like a, um, it was like an intervention almost, you know. Um, and I was like, bro, like my my mind is set, and you know, they kind of they know me, so they know when my mind set, my mind is set. They still try to convince me because you know, I mean, I had a good, um, I was in a good position, especially in like in LA. Our rent was pretty cheap too. Like, I was just in a good position out there, but I was just. Yeah, some I man. My my friends back home in Texas was like, "Yeah, fuck it, let's rap." I had one friend, um, who was just like, "What the fuck? No, like, what are you talking about? Bro? <laughs> Don't do that shit." And um, we not even being friends no more. That was my dog, but we not friends no more. Oh, for real? Yeah. Nah. Um, who were you living with in LA? Were they all doing comedy as well? Um, one of them was a videographer. Um, one. Another one of them was an act. Two of them, two other ones were. It was a five bedroom. It was five of us. One of them was a videographer. Two of them was actors, and another one was doing comedy. How was that? Did you guys ever get to like work together on anything, or was it kind of just like we just was together because we was trying to, uh, but it never really happened. It was just too much. It was like, um, I mean, it's not that we all procrastinate, but we just. I don't know. We just it, it just never happened. You know, we we just never got around to it. We 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 sit down and be like, okay, this is the plan, but it never happened. Yeah, for sure. Um, would you do a feature if I got a certain amount of likes on a post? Yeah, fuck it. Why How not? many likes? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Uh, 100, 200, I don't know. <laughs> 100, All right, bet. We'll give that guy a shout out later. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to read these questions. Hmm. Oh, we have a fan from Chicago. Have you ever been out to Chicago? 
Yeah, you know, on the, on the song Stones, I was like, uh, I just got flew out by this girl from Illinois one time for my city boys. So yeah, this one girl had, uh, she flew me out there. It was cool. Chicago is one city that lives up to how beautiful people say it is. You know, um, I've been to a lot of places, but Chicago is Chicago's beautiful. When was that? How many years ago? Uh, that was um, this year, some of this year, really. Oh, for real? Yeah, I actually went twice, low key. I went, I went a, a, some years ago, but I had just drove by it. I, I, but this year, I actually like went to it and saw shit. Okay, cool. She said she'll be the next to fly you out. Okay, bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your personal favorite song on the EP? Um, I mean, it switches so much. I mean, um. <laughs> probably back home back home was a song like after i made it i knew that i was done but it wasn't it wasn't back home wasn't the last song i made it's the last uh, song on the ep but it wasn't the last song i made but i when i made it i knew it would be the last song and i knew i was done telling my story but i still needed something else for uh for an interlude so yeah yeah that was my cherry on top that was my another ending of that i knew yeah that was a good way to end the ep i like that song a lot yeah, thank you so much. Um, do you plan on dropping any more episodes on your YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, I dropped uh, episode one, two, and three, and then uh, mm -hmm. it's six episodes. Um, but um, on January tenth, I'm going to drop all of them together as a short film. Sure, for sure. So I dropped I dropped the rest of them as a um, as a little package. Um, what would you say is like your one piece of advice you'd give to kids? or like people who are trying to pursue a music career? Uh, do it if, you know, just, I don't know. I'm still pursuing it. I mean, just have fun with it. Just, I do music because, I mean, I tried to do something else and I just wasn't happy. So, you know, I do music because I, I, I wouldn't be happy if I didn't. And I feel like if, if that's the reason that you're pursuing anything, then you're gonna be, as long as you're happy, you're successful, so. Right. And it's never too late to start. You could always no, right. change your career or whatever. Um, yeah. How long did it take you to film all six of the episodes? Um, it took, like, we started down there in August. We started in August, so it took four months. But that's because at one point my barber had fucked up my fade and I had to wait like a month or two for it to grow back. And then my videographer was out of town by the time it did grow back. So I had to wait a little bit more. Were there any other complications like trying to find the like, actors and stuff? Uh, yeah, one of my actresses flaked on me. Um, one of the actresses in it is my ex-girlfriend. But, you know, we were dating at the time. So that's going to be weird when that comes up. <laughs> um, Probably gonna still tag her in it, like, hey, see you. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, look at you. Um, are you trying to, I know you said you're just doing music now, but are you gonna try to somehow incorporate your comedy into music, like when it comes to like promo stuff or like on Instagram and everything? Yeah, I feel like I've been doing that a little bit already. Um, and I mean, I mean, I'm I'm just, I'm a funny nigga. I mean, you know, just because, I mean, I say, you know, people, people, uh, I say, I'm not going to do comedy anymore. And people are like, no, you're so funny. It's like, but I'm still going to be funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm still going to be, so that's not going to change. I mean, I couldn't stop being funny if I fucking tried. It's just, I'm not going to do it as a, as a job anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, for but, sure. But yeah, I mean, definitely incorporating that. I mean, I feel like that's why it's going to be not easier, but. Me, me being funny and also having a personality, like already knowing how the internet works and being an influencer on top of doing, you know, music, you know, the, the more I do it, the more I'm going to figure out how to mesh it and integrate it more and have it be more seamless. But, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of how I felt about that video you posted about trying to find producers or beats or something. And then you're talking about... Um, <laughs> Your cousin's beats or something like that. Yeah, the man. <laughs> 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 um, let's see. 
any songs you regret putting out? Mm -mm. No, uh, I only put out six songs. I mean, maybe uh, I got songs um, that I that I that I regret putting out the way they were mixed. Like uh, climate change, I wanted to because I actually got that one mixed, but that's the third song. No, that's the second song on the on the EP, and that you know. I had an idea that I really wanted it to be more that I de um, I didn't want it I would I didn't I didn't want to have it mixed I shouldn't have had it mixed because I um, the concept was that I was rapping and I'm trying to rap and trying to you know start my rap career and I'm doing it in a home studio but I'm living with my girl and she is, she's interrupting me while I while I'm rapping so I kind of wanted it to have still had that raw and unmixed and like un you know like um, just that type of vibe. Um, so I wish I could have put it out that way, but I mean, it still sounds good getting it actually professionally mixed. It still sounds good that way, but I think it would have been clever of me to do that. Yeah. How many, like, how many unreleased songs do you have? How did you pick those six songs to put on there? Um. Uh, well, I knew I had to put songs on there because that was the first song I made and that it was just something really special to me. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, even the beginning of songs, it was, um, you know, I mean, that song is about L.A. And I knew what my tape was going to be about for the most part before I really started on it. I knew it was going to be about me coming home and me missing my son and family and me trying to realign and um, find find out, find my, get in touch with my older self. Um, but I, I, I ended up moving uh, back. When I moved back, I moved back with my girl, my ex-girl. And that was, it was like a toxic relationship. So what I thought the album was going to be about, it was about that, but then it was about more that I really didn't expect it to be about, about the toxic relationship. But so once I like had, I had the beginning and the end was, which was, you know, the conflict and, you know, the retired, which is like, I just retired from work. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And back home is like, okay, like now I'm doing what I want to do. And, and everything else in the middle is just the journey but between. So, once I once I made, this is so funny because yeah, like I like I I know once I make a song, I pretty much know what order that is going to go in, for mm -hmm. the most part. So. Are you working on like a, another EP now or an album? Yeah, I think I am. I don't. I never know though. I never know. Um, I'm I'm always writing. Um, well, not always. I mean, I know people who always write and and who who's always recording. Like my cousin, my little cousin, he's so good at rapping. And he 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 make three or four songs a day. And I don't got that much to say. Like I don't have that much to say at all. Like I don't I feel like my set of it'll be watered down and it just wouldn't be as good. But I mean but whenever I whenever I do feel like I got something to say, then I then I write. But I don't know if I'm doing another EP right now. I've I've been writing songs, but I don't know if it's a part of a project or if I just release them as Lucy's by themselves. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I um for my next project, I do want it to be um way uh, like hyper and more fun because you know my debut EP it was just to tell a story and reintroduce myself as a rapper and explain the last three or four or five years about you know what I was going through um and um and it, it was really for me to heal this ep was and i definitely did heal through it and um and i feel like i did reintroduce that self and kind of got a new handle on on, on, on the rebrand and stuff like that so my next tape i don't have I, I don't think it'll be so um purposed i don't think uh i i have you know so so much so many things to just that i that i feel so compelled to hit on like my next ep i feel like i can just write and rap and for the fun of it and just because i like doing this shit, you know yeah just kind of be like more or just have more fun with it instead of trying to make it like into a like all the storytelling and trying to make it like yeah. all the, like that one project yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Now, now, because now i don't i mean I don't have a story to tell at this point i've mm -hmm. told it already so now 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 i can rap and have fun and and you know experience life and rap about that until I, I got another story to tell you said stones was the first song you made mm -hmm. when was that Two, uh, when i came home for my son's birthday 2019 so when like back in march when all the 
like the lockdown and quarantine stuff happened do you feel like it stopped what you were doing or did it help you kind of just sit down and focus on the music i mean at that point i already had um my home studio and i don't really mm-hmm. I, I haven't had a job in like six years almost i think it's been six so i mean i was when it, when all the quarantine shit happened it was just like i mean this is what i do anyway like i don't leave the house i just stay i work i'm on the internet or and yeah i was i was home making music every day anyway so it was it was routine for me how many days total do you think it takes you to create a song um well that's that's very interesting because uh okay so retired on one hand um the, i'm though the, like the first verse of it i wrote like five years ago um because i at, at, I was talking about in that first verse of retired. I was talking about a, um, how I did a brand deal for Jolly Rancher, and they made me take my jewelry off, um, so I looked more relatable, and I felt like I was compromising my image. And um, so I wrote about that experience right when it happened, five, five, like five years ago, and uh, I used it again um, when, when when for retired, and um, I just knew it was perfect for that. So I mean, some songs like. I mean, I guess technically that one was like five years. Um, it just depends. Like, I, 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 I'll I, be working on the song and I'd be like, oh, this shit that I wrote a long time ago would be perfect right here, you know? And, um, yeah. And, oh, like, with Slide and, like, you know, Climate Change, is like, you know, I write, if I write a song about, if it seems like I'm writing about one person, it's never really one person a lot of the time. So I'm writing about two of my experiences with, like, two or three different people over a long course of time. So, yeah. How does it make you feel when you kind of get stuck in a writer's block? Or you feel like you have nothing that you can write about? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I feel like that means I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, but also with, with my process, like I said, it's imp- imp- improvisation, it's freestyle. So, I can never get writer's block with freestyling. Like, you're not writing. There's never, I never had freestyle block. If I can't freestyle, then, you know, I don't know. I mean, I got, I might just need to smoke or, you know, drink a little bit. But other than that, I don't have writer's block ever. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Did you ever get, like, when you did comedy and stuff, did you ever get a creative block? Where you felt like you were okay, yeah, comedy, writing? yeah, okay. Comedy, yeah. I get writer's <laughs> block with comedy. But, I mean... That's the same thing, and that's 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 another reason why I I like this I like do I like doing music versus doing comedy because how I had a, like I had like I said I could I I could spend a, a year and a half on this EP because you know a year and a half on a project you know you can't I couldn't do that with a joke I can't do that with comedy I can't do that with a comedy sketch um, I could really I could really nurture it. And um, and really take care of it. Like I said, I've been writing like some songs. I I take years to write, you know. Um, or, so but I, I you can't do that with comedy, especially with you know um, doing sketches. Because I was still even after Von, I was still doing sketches on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube, like the little scream shit and like all of those little cool things that I was doing with that. And I just wasn't. I've. You have to constantly, especially with Instagram's algorithm, you have to constantly upload. Like people have to constantly see you. And I don't I see comedy as an art just as much as I see music as an art. And I feel like how I have to live before I can tell another story and how to experience telling another story, I have to live before I can tell another joke. Like I have to get that experience. I have to and I feel like doing doing internet sketches doesn't give you enough time. It doesn't give you enough time to go through it. Because, um, yeah, because you got to upload a lot, Loki. <laughs> so when you, like, when your Instagram page was all comedy and then you announced that you're going to drop an EP and you're, like, a musician and a rapper and stuff, did your followers, like, what was their reaction? Did they think it was just, like, you're just messing with everyone or were they supportive? Um, I mean, I lost a lot of followers. But, I mean, I expected that. When I said, I mean, I, I, in, in my initial post, because when I did the, um, when I got the Revolt special, um, I announced that I had it, and I said, well, all I wanted to do was, you know, I, I, I reached my goal of doing stand-up on TV. I got my own comedy special. And, you know, on this note, I'm done with comedy. 
And uh, you know, I said like if you want to unfollow me, you know, please do. Like I rather I rather you unfollow me if you're expecting comedy from this point out, you know. And um, and I did. I lost like twenty thousand followers on Twitter, and I probably lost maybe thirty or forty thousand um, a piece on Instagram and Twitter, which was which is I think that it's not that much really considering you know if you follow somebody for cooking and they say you know what I don't I don't actually cook anymore. You know, for you, for people to stay, I mean, I was still, for 40,000 people to leave, for anybody to stay, I was grateful, you know? Yeah, for sure. So it didn't um, make you lose any motivation at all? You were just kind of, you knew it was going to happen, so it didn't really affect you? Yeah, if, I mean, if I had lost 100,000 followers, I still would have had, you know, 100,000 followers. So and then now I would be at a good place to where I would be at a better place than another musician who's starting out with, you know, just a couple hundred, like 600, 700. So, you know, even if I only like I lost so many that it was only like 20,000 people still following me, I would still be blessed to even have that. Yeah, for sure. That's how you have to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. You think you've gained like um, a new group or new following from your music or has it not really taken off like that yet? Um, yeah, we're really, you know, I've been doing like, you know, promoting with blogs. And so I did get like people who got introduced to me as a as a rapper. But I feel like this first EP, it was kind of, you know, it was kind of fan service for people who are already who are who are already aware of me. And because, um, you know, it is such a storytelling. I, I was telling so many stories of, you know, how I don't want to do comedy no more than how I did it. So it was kind of like this EP was kind of like you not, not that you already had to know me but like i said it was fan service so yeah so when you said that you like or that you enjoy music more than comedy what even made you want to do comedy in the first place um i was dating this girl at the time and um i had posted something funny on facebook and she, this is before, this is before Facebook was like how it is now. Like she, you know, like she goes viral on Facebook now. She didn't used to go viral on Facebook. Facebook used to just be like, you know, I don't know. Like it, it wasn't like that. And uh, she was like, you need to post that on Twitter. Like this is something that'll go viral on Twitter. And I, the exact thing I posted on Facebook, I put on Twitter, it went viral. And this was like 2012. So I was like, I was Twitter famous for like, cause I started doing Vine 2015. And so, I, and I started tweeting in 2011, I think. So I was like really big on Twitter. Like I had the Twitter community. Like I was tweeting like a motherfucker. And when I started doing Vine, like four years later, I kind of already had that um, that following a little bit, and they was fucking with it. And you know, also I really also blew up on Tumblr before anything else um, for some reason. Like my shit was going crazy. Crazy. Like because you know, with Vine, I didn't even. At one point, I didn't have that many followers on Vine, but uh, but all of my Vines were blown up because of Tumblr. Like I was going dumb on Tumblr. Do you remember what that original post was from Facebook? Um, <laughs> 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 you not really. I don't want to say. I don't want to say. I'm gonna do some deep searching. <laughs> find it um yeah was it a video or was it just like um like... i was just like a little funny oh, like okay. a funny one-liner okay yeah we'll definitely find it after this <laughs> <laughs> bit <laughs> um what was, was your experience sorry what was no, your experience no. like with uh was it camp unplugged was it like kind of like cringy or like what so so long ago. I mean, we was chilling. It was just like being. It was my first time like being in like that type of environment. Um, it was cool meeting all the other influencers. Um, it was it was just it was cool. It was cool being out there. I mean, I, I at that point I wasn't traveled at all. Like that was probably one of my first trips ever. Probably one of my first times ever being on a plane. So that it, that was I was just that shit was just dope to me. Do you think like being around those other influencers like influenced you to? Like when you're like doing comedy, do you think it influenced you to like keep doing comedy at that time? Yeah, because at one point, um, all of my friends were influencers, you know, yeah. um, and I was just thinking like, and I feel like that's another mistake I made because 
I wasn't seeing it as like, you know, these are just people who do the same shit that I do. Like I was seeing it like, oh yeah, like we're we do the same stuff and like we have so much in common, we're cool and I was being friends with influencers just because they were influencers, you know, and we, I lost a lot of other friendships that I didn't really water at the time because I was so focused on, you know, doing that, making those type of connections with people that I worked with. But yeah. Do you still stay in contact with those influencers? No, I'm cool with Kenny. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really fuck with nobody else. I fuck with Kenny. I mean, other like you know, like Richie Loco. I fuck with Richie Loco, Kenny. Um, I thought you did hair. like a. Interview with Cody Co. Oh, oh, yeah, I used to do that. Interview, my yeah. bad. <laughs> that podcast. When I was um. When I was in LA, when I was doing stand up, I used to do stand up. Me and Noel, you we used to always hit open mics. This is before like you know they went crazy, yes. and um, I hit a couple mics with uh, Cody Co. A couple times too, and. It was pretty dope. Yeah, we used to, but me and Noel, we was in the, we was on the scene. We was on the, we was on the open mic scene. That open mic scene is a big. Were you guys close? Yeah, I man, that's my dog. That's my dog. We don't talk as much now, but that was my, that was my motherfucking dog. For, for, what for year seven. was that when you were doing open mics? Twenty seventeen, I think. Oh, okay. Twenty seventeen, yeah, twenty seventeen. For sure. Yeah. Um. I don't think I have anything else unless you want to talk about something that we didn't mention. No, nah, y'all had some really good questions. I think this is the best interview I've done ever. For real? It was great to hear, actually. It's yeah, probably I've your only interview. Uh, and to do the, uh, <laughs> nah, nah, be before this, I went on, I did a lot of podcasts, like, um, for, like, the promo run for the EP. So, yeah, this is definitely the best one. Y'all had some really good questions. Oh, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for well, yeah. or talking I, in here. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming out, kind of. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> See you. Bye.